Hello everyone. It's another week to talk about happenings in the tech world, especially as it relates to Africa. Yeah, and it's also another week to remind ourselves of the of the ongoing economic situation that is causing a lot of things, especially in the investment world. And it's one of the things that a startup that a Nigerian startup that laid up, that shut down rather last week, like that was the reason they put behind their shutting down. That startup is Laser Pay, and their reason is that they were not able to raise the next round of funds they were supposed to raise. Sounds sad, but it calls for a lot of question. With me in the studio today is Steve Gosling and Bully. Hello, Welcome. everybody. And I don't know if we should dwell on this laser pay discussion because it has raised a lot of controversies. Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Uh, I, I guess within a certain group of people, it did. But mm -hmm. I think the general, um, the general reaction to the story has been, you know, um, you know, it's your first time. This is just the, you know, it's normal. We get better. I see that knowing so smile on Chigo's <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah, but then we've had we've, we've also had people who now say, "How do you say you are shutting down because you cannot raise funds?" So I, you know, I think Chigo's name has has a lot to say about this. I don't know how long <laughs> he's going to spend talking about it. But I think he has he has some. I don't know. He's on the other side of the spectrum, Shah. <laughs> I'm on every part of the spectrum, depending on what day you ask me or what question you ask me. Mm -hmm. It's a valid reason to shut down. That's the reality. It's a valid reason. Um, but it also makes people, I, I think it's, it's, I mean, for people on the outside, it's also an, it's an opportunity for you to get a little glimpse into how, is it funny, the startup life can be. Yeah. So, the idea, so I don't know how, you guys grew up, but my understanding of businesses was that businesses would, like, ideally they should start making money as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Where they can't, then you have to find some form of financing to sustain it. So it's either your savings, or maybe you're able to yes. get someone from somewhere to get, to just put up enough capital to see you through a specific period. Mm -hmm. And until you can get to the point where at the very least maybe your revenues are sustaining a significant portion of your even expenses, if even profits, if you're not yes. making profits, then you can stay alive. And it's something that startups seem to not want to do. Yeah. And uh, maybe that's because the whole premise of venture capital is grow as fast as possible. We are funding innovation in quote. I hate using that word these days, but everyone claims they are funding mm -hmm. innovation. And that's like the whole premise of it. So one of the things it does, I've been having this conversation with um, a friend in for the last maybe two weeks. Do you want to grow so fast and yet you can't sustain your operations? Mm -hmm. Because it's one of the major problems. You can grow that very fast. Sells to you people. Yeah, that, I mean, it's one of the things that sells to them. But um, so far, we are still dwelling on laser pay. So launch 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And the idea was to help businesses accept payments using cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. basically a pay stack but for crypto sounds interesting when mm -hmm. you consider that nigerian businesses were especially nigerian businesses were suffering to get access to dollars so that's a huge uh, a very good value proposition and they quickly raise enough money to get them out into the market uh, um by the statement they put out they had served about three thousand merchants what i noticed is 3,000 merchants was the same number they gave us the last time they hit off. Yeah. yeah. So that means not much growth happened between that time and when they shut down. This is yeah. roughly four or five months. If not, yeah. Five months or so. That's kind of how long it takes for you to, to keep convincing investors. Mm. Yeah. So it's, so I mean, people have said uh, we are past the stage where you say not raising funds is your reason. But investors will tell you, when you want to, if you want to raise one million, you should be asking yourself how long will one million That's last. True. So if the one million won't take you past a certain, um, so if for example one million would keep you in keep you alive for a year, then 
makes sense. But don't raise one million, and maybe one million is only going to be enough for eight, eight months, and you're hoping to raise money at some point. But yeah, it just, I mean, yes, it's it's a sad tale, but then businesses fail every day. Yeah. yeah. And it's just important. But, but then I think startups should, should, I'm working on something about uh, the trend with which startups, African startups, Nigerian startups, mm. uh, is, it, is it African? African startups are laying off. Yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll come I'll come back with a conclusion but the what I found out so far is the is an important reason why startups should focus more on making revenue at least something to meet your recurring needs right yeah, yeah, yeah. funding might come funding might yeah. not come yeah. right but the focus is on making revenue knowing that you actually have a product that the market needs yeah, you should run a business because those are the ones surviving now. People that are yeah. truly really do not business. care about whether you're giving your employees merch when they come on or giving them laptops or what. That's another another discussion. Really. I'm still talking about um, the current situation of since it seems Silicon Valley has been taking a lot of. Um, of the impact lately, right? It's been it's either the economic recession, the, the Silicon Valley Bank, and everything. The recent one is um, Meta, that is the parent company of Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. Uh, started laying off again, started on Tuesday, still running now. So, the situation of things in Meta is that some people are still dreading, they don't know whether they will be part of this layoff or not. So, 4,000 jobs would be cut and there are probably 6,000 more coming because from the statement that Mark made in March, it was like there might be 10,000 <laughs> more people <laughs> sent back to the job search market at least. But now 4,000 has been confirmed and they are receiving their notice one after the other. And I, I know what I was just imagining was how thick skin the head of people would be at this moment because just in November, Meta mm. laid off 11,000 people. Wow. Yeah. And you've, you've stopped hiring for like 5,000 roads that were mm -hmm. open before. Mm -hmm. You stopped that. And now you are releasing bad news back to back. And I can imagine employee morale getting very low. People mm. are probably revolting within. There, there might be internal... Um, conflict going on because mm. you don't know who next would be. You're probably having survival guilt that, okay, you were not affected but still uh, your friends were affected. So I can imagine what is going on within Meta. But mm. from what is the, what they say is behind the reason for this layoffs and hiring freeze and one other thing which which Mark said is trying to thin out the the um, the space between management and the people that are now down the organogram. Oh, okay. So you are removing mid-level people so that wow. even the people that are top, that are still in management roles, they can also take on um, hands-on hands -on yeah. roles, like coding, like mm. designing. You get. So I'm it's going to be, the year. I'm going to be earning your money now. <laughs> right. It's the year of efficiency. Right. And I came across a conversation earlier in the week of big engineer of large engineering teams doing nothing like achieving very less compared to small, small engineering uh, teams and i kind of agree because uh, it, when you see that the the line of communication or what is it called the line of i think it's line of communication if the longer it gets the longer it gets to get yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i i think that is what i'm not i'm not supporting what is doing Business has to run. I think what that's what Mark is doing, reducing. Uh, why did things. they even have to get to that point? In the first like, place? interestingly, interestingly, um, what's it called? Um, Meta's workforce mm. as of 2019 was uh, almost 45,000 okay. people. But even after now, after Meta laid off that 11,000 in November last year, its mm. workforce was around 86,000. Wow. So I think it's, it's trying to go back it's to what 6, it was. 000. Yes. That's I mean, more than, I don't know. Uh, they probably employ more people than the federal government. In Nigeria. <laughs> if you say that. So maybe um, the company is trying to wind back to what it was before mm. the good days of mm. 2020. 
as it were. So, um, we are mis- wishing sad. Meta the All best the in their journey of laying off, and we are hoping that the ones that are laid off find their foot quickly. I am. I believe that the company is um paying attention to severance to help those people to get themselves together before they move on. But that's not all we'll be discussing about Meta today, right? Meta is, is connecting going, blows, bus blows from two countries in Africa. So, Shingo, you tell us about it. Okay. Um, so, Meta, Meta's um, legal words in Africa just seem to continue. It's almost like they're in the news every week. Every other week, yeah. Yeah. So, this time around in Kenya, um, they are being barred from hiring another person, another, uh, we like call it, service provider. Oh, they want, they want the case. Um, the Kenyans want the case. Something like that. So it's, it's an ongoing case. And oh. they are being banned from hiring a different company. Yeah. So now the court has already said you can't hire, like these guys can't work for you anymore. So they are now they have to wait until the court case is all over. Mm. So basically, uh, they are content moderation jobs or partner in Kenya is now they can't hire because the court has stopped them but they still have employees and according to them they are incurring expenses by paying these employees mm-hmm. i think they are all on a paid leave so they're incurring expenses by paying employees even though they're not working, they are not working. Mm-hmm. and moving to south africa it's it's not the same thing this this time it is is like an anti-competitive um suit so kenya is being sorry meta is being accused of anti-competitive practices where it is it, it's pulling off a service from using its uh, api so GovChart is the name of the company and it's accusing meta of pulling pulling it off the uh, whatsapp api database in order to offer a similar service so i was checking GovChart's website and um, the they currently have about nine million users and what they just do is connect gov- government and mm-hmm. citizens so like a bridge between the government and the citizens so um it's i don't know it's, it's kind of gov tech yeah kind of gov tech so i guess you can send messages to government officials and vice versa so mm-hmm. they I d- they are already serving nine million people and meta is saying you guys have been flouting our rules so it's time to get out and they are saying no it's not the reason you are uh, you're kicking us out we're doing it because want to launch a similar service and now compete directly with us or deal directly with the government i mean whatsapp already has the api so it doesn't really cost them a lot to do that so that's their that's the state of their um, lawsuits now i will not go well for them i mean it's something something the government uses right yeah yeah it's not like necessarily government but well, it helps it connects government with people mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and I mean, nine million people already doing that, mm. already using them for that. So, I think that, that company has the upper hand. Yeah, uh, and I think going by the legal suits that has been that have been raised um, against Meta this past few months in Africa, I don't know. It's looking anyone that will not cost them money, they should just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this one is going to cost them money because the commission that they've been that they are standing before is recommending that they be filed find 10 percent of their annual revenue so Oof. that's a lot of money for you to and i guess they are going to fight to the very end to ensure that again i wish meta the best <laughs> okay so uh, all right and before we go to the next thing we are talking about now um i think this is a good time to remind us that Lego startup expo is holding on may 20 at landmark event center Center. on the island (laughs) and (laughs) why did i have to put it like that but yeah you know how it is if you've been if you've been following tech points event for for a while now you will know how much value we give to the extent that we pull a lot of crowd ranging from decision makers in organizations startup founders entrepreneurs um tech expert tech enthusiast we pull all these people together from every walks of life from every part of nigeria and we bring them together now i'm wondering if you are if, if you have a product or even if it's still an idea and you are looking for a place to put it in the faces of people 
I'm wondering where would be the first, the best place to, if not at the Lagos Startup Expo. So this is another call out to tell you to be a sponsor of this event or exhibit at the, at the event. We are pulling to, we are bringing together um, startups, o over 200 startups too, that, that we have boots all over that place. And you would be able, not only be able to put your product in, in front of people, you can also go to other people's stands and see people whose ideas or products align with yours. And you, you, you might not know where you will meet somebody to partner with or to get that your next big client. So don't forget to go to lagostartupexpo.com to book your stand or reach out to business at techpoint.africa if you need any other information on how you can sponsor the event also we're also inviting you to attend if you are if you fall into any of this category you can attend you can come to network you can come to get merch yes just mm -hmm. imagine bringing you know the way startups are with giving out perks right you don't yeah. want to miss that so register to attend at lagosstartupexpo.com and keep it in mind. We already have some sponsors, right? We have Cardonic. Anchor is already on board. Cardonic. Card Cardonic. Cardonic. I'm sorry. Thank you, Bolu. <laughs> Cardonic is on board. Anchor is on board. Cardify, Racknida, Gray, and many more are coming on. So don't forget to join us on this work. And May 20 is just around the corner. I'm, I can't wait to see you. Although you might see me from afar, I'll not be able to talk to you, but I can't wait to see you. But yeah, so moving on to the next thing we are discussing today is, is Netflix. Netflix released a report recently and yeah. gave us some figures that got our head turning. Hey, what's going on? Okay, yeah, so Netflix basically released their um, social economic impact report from 2016 to 2022, which is the amount of time they've been africa and they gave us some very interesting figures such as how they've been able to improve um, the film industry majorly in nigeria kenya and south africa um, the impacts they've had a lot of impacts um, from according to the reports like in terms of gdp you know gdp growth um, people that have gotten jobs um, people that you know the quality of you know films on the continent and I think one of the most, one thing that really stuck, stuck out to me was um, you know, how much they've invested so far. And they've invested $375 million uh, from 2016 to 2022. And you know, they gave us some breakdown of how they shared that money among um, the, countries. I think the, the three major countries where you know, they've, been, you know, they've been doing a lot of work, which is South Africa, Nigeria, and Kenya. So I think South Africa got the lion's share. South Africa got out of South Africa got seventy one percent of that money. Uh, that's around um, one hundred and twenty three million, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Nigeria got twenty three million, <laughs> <laughs> and Kenya did not even tell us how much they did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm market. so sorry. To, uh, I hope they won't come for me like they did. But they got the <laughs> yes, but I think it's just. It shows how the because they said you know they're just starting out uh they're still going to do a lot more but i think they they are focusing on what i believe i could be wrong and i mean if you're watching this podcast you can also share some of your insights with me i would really love to but i believe that south africa is um probably the most robust um entertainment film industry um out of the three right which is why they've had to spend you know, a lot of money a, you know a lot of money in that um, country and um, the irony, the yes. irony is Nigeria actually yes. released. Nigeria releases more, they, they license more movies, right? In Nigeria, I think over 200 movies to over 230, and then in South Africa, it was around 176 or so, right? That they licensed, right? But you now notice that there were more commissioned movies in South Africa, there were around 16 commissioned movies, right? Which is what we call Netflix originals. Mm. In Nigeria, it was lower. Mm. I think I don't think it was up to five. Right? It was between three and five, right? So, which is why they spent more money. I think those Netflix originals, mm. they really put. You know, it's not like yeah. licensed movies where the person has made their movie, brings it on Netflix. Yeah, right? yeah, so there was even this particular uh, movie at uh, One Piece. I, I don't know. 
and they think that right here. One uh, piece. Yeah, one piece. A South African movie which I think the budget was fifty four million dollars, mm. right? And then when you think about it, fifty four million dollars is already more than the entire money they've spent in Nigeria <laughs> between twenty sixteen and twenty twenty two. Like that's just mm. Well, yes, not <laughs> the the commissioned movies, the Netflix originals, the Nollywood, the Nollywood Netflix originals were banned. Bang, okay. yeah, yeah, if you look at the ratings in the mm. um in the reports, well. yeah, and yeah, yeah, they, they were banned. They they did really well. They did really well. Yeah, um, and the the um the, the yeah. one that was a series was a limited series. Yeah. Meanwhile, and the Blood South Sisters. African Blood, Blood Sisters. Sisters, yes, and but South Africa had like um. Blood and water. Is it blood and water? Like season one, season two, season three, which I've watched. I yeah. Don't so. Know but <laughs> yeah. So I think Anikola, Blood Sisters. I can't remember the third Nigerian movie that did really well. But overall, South Africa had the most movies that you mm-hmm. know really went global and yeah. But it's really interesting and I'm excited to because you know I was having this discussion and I was like, you know, we've seen streaming platforms like music streaming platforms, you know, make. African music, you know, really go global where we can't really say it was majorly new music streaming platforms. Uh, because with mu- music it's easier. You are not it's not as if YouTube music or Spotify is coming to say, Hey, take ten million gram mm. produce it. The musicians are doing their thing mm-hmm. and these people are just helping them and then there's also social media. But I think you know we can replicate the same thing because it we don't really have that funding, right? When it comes to film. Africa, generally. For Nigeria, I think I know more for Nigeria. We don't really have that money. But there's this... uh, And, you know, the competition will make it even better because Netflix is bringing 175 million. Imagine what Prime Video bring. Imagine what Disney Plus will bring. For how long? I don't... Like, how much will they bring? No. Like, will they continue doing this? Yes. Yes, I think they they find the market viable. So, that's a very good question. That's a very good question, which is a question I'm going to answer in an article coming up. Which is yes, Netflix says you invested more than seventy five million. How much did they really make within the amount of time? Was it were they just putting in money? It's a long and it's a long so term. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. I think it's a long term investment. Of course, but it's a long term investment, right? But, but for you to justify that um, investment, you also need to be looking at like the the people you're investing money. So yes, um, South Africa. Got 125 million or so. The I'd like to see how many Netflix subscribers are in South Africa. So you would now start <laughs> looking at how much are we making directly from these people? Because when they were talking about impact, they were talking about direct impact, direct impact. Yeah. So yeah. directly, how much are we making from South African mm-hmm. movies? How many times were these movies streamed? Now, if you're investing in, if if you're investing in a place and okay, let's say look at what happened with Irogo TV. They were investing in African movies or Nigerian movies, and they realized that the US was paying them a lot more. So now Customers they've changed their pricing strategy. They've changed every single thing to appeal to those guys. Would that be the case for Netflix? I think it's, uh, I think that would be the case. Okay, I, I disagree. I disagree with that actually, okay. and that is because I think Iroko TV does not have the kind of they are not as deep pocketed as Netflix. That's why I said Netflix can afford to do that long term investment. They can where afford they might to. not. They can, yeah, yeah, yes, they, they can, can afford use to. Other will they, will they, that's another question that I can't that's answer. I can't I, okay, ask. You okay, can maybe, afford to maybe I'm talking as an insider, not like insider in Netflix. I mean, uh, as in Nigeria, as a local, okay. right? Looking at the kind of um, reaction that the um, their movies get. As nice as original movies get right from mm. Nigerians yeah. and the fact that they've they've entered into the Nollywood space mm-hmm. that and they're already collaborating with stars, they're yeah. collaborating with producers. So it's not something that you just say they, they they should have seen something in this market before they say they are going into it. That is I think that is the thing with big tech companies coming to Africa, right? Mm. They are not expecting to get returns immediately, but they see prospect. And if mm. they have to keep at it for a long time for them to start getting the div- dividends of what they are doing, I think they will do it. Well, not not to contradict myself because I, <laughs> I still believe <laughs> they are in <laughs> for the long run. Whether they will How continue. How long is that long well, run? That long run will take, for me, for me, I would bet that that long run is, I mean, how, how long have they done now? They've done, how many years is between? Six years, I think. Six, six years. years. I think they will still have to do 
probably another six to ten years More like before you those we dividends. Are being realistic. If we are being okay, let's let's say twenty. Let's right. enjoy it while it's But the last. thing is, just because they are big tech doesn't mean they can't make mistakes, right? Of Some course. people can decide to say, oh, this market might this boom. This they put one billion yeah. and yeah. I mean, Yahoo. <laughs> right okay yeah. so um we are hoping this lo- this run doesn't stop because i love i i really really love yeah, what Nollywood netflix is. is doing with nollywood yeah, i nollywood really really love also it. doing well and I'm, I'm hoping this continues for a long mm-hmm. time and we are trying to remind you of our newsletters the uh, tech point digest it's a round of of all the tech news that's happening in africa it's a week daily um newsletter that runs from Monday to Friday. There's also the workaholic and then fintech today. Um, the first one is to get everything you need to know that is happening in the work workspace. And fintech today is also to remind you or discuss um, start some discussions about what is happening in the financial space in Africa. So thank you once again for joining us today. It's always nice to have you. Don't forget. To if you are watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and also click on the notification bell because there are always things you should learn. Also, doing shout outs to those people that have been commenting, that have been li- liking more our love, post and and be sending us <laughs> was one love and those that have been sending us feedback. We 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 will keep we will love to hear more from you on how we can make this better. And if you are an audio lover. Um, Bully will tell us where you can get. Yes, if uh, you're an audio lover, you can always find us on Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Hyatt Radio, and anywhere else you can find your podcast. I hope that sinks in. So, see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.